Hi folks, my name is Madhura Miskaski. I'm one of the co-founders and VP of product at Platform Line Systems. Um, and I want to get started by saying that it's an absolute pleasure and honor to be here presenting for the second time. Um, we were here not too long ago, around January, earlier this year, Shirish and myself presented. And that was our first time presenting at Tech Field Day and we had an absolutely fantastic time. So really excited to be here for the second time. Um, so let's get started. For my session for today, I'm going to focus primarily on live demos of Platform 9, so let's just hope that all of them work. Um, <laughs> my session is divided into three sections today. The first two sections are all focused around Platform 9's integration with VMware vSphere. Um, and I think it's appropriate to spend that kind of time on this topic considering that we're on the first day of VMworld 2015 today. Um, and Platform 9 also made some announcements around this topic pretty recently. So those are going to be the first two sections, and then the section three is going to be focused all around the interoperability of Platform 9 with uh, storage or networking stack, any storage or networking, either existing or brand new. Okay, so let's get started. So the first section for today is all about how to give an Amazon public cloud-like makeover to your vSphere environment. So I remember about probably a decade or so ago when I was a student, uh, when I was studying at Stanford, I, uh, I did all my assignments, all my work as part of one of these lab servers, which was part of this laboratory full of mainframe servers, Solaris based servers that Stanford provided to all their students. Right? And that's what I was used to. That was my environment. But as I fast forward to today, and if you look at computer science students from today, do you think they're familiar with mainframe servers? Probably not. Right? What they really like to utilize to do all their work, their assignments, everything, is public cloud. Right? They love using Amazon, and they really love the out-of-the-box ease of use and agility that, that public cloud provides. And so when these students graduate and become the DevOps engineers, the software developers of today and tomorrow, that is exactly the kind of experience that they demand from their IT infrastructure teams. Right, but the IT teams of small to medium large size enterprises um, have these large investments in existing virtualized assets, right? typically in VMware vSphere, which are not that easy to cloudify. So that's what we're going to focus on today. What I'm going to demo to you is how does Platform 9 enable this makeover for your existing vSphere infrastructure, where you can take what you have today in terms of VMware vSphere infrastructure and transform it in a matter of minutes into an OpenStack-based cloud. So what I have in front of us is a live demo, a live setup of Platform 9. And I also have a vCenter environment here in front of me. So let me quickly log in. So this particular demo environment is, uh, we're going to pair it with VMware vSphere infrastructure. Um, in a nutshell, what Platform 9 is, is OpenStack as a service. So every new user that signs up for Platform 9 gets, a, gets access to a portal like this, right? Where when, when he signs in for the first time, a welcome wizard um, greets him and walks him through the step-by-step -step process of pairing his infrastructure with Platform 9. So what you see here is a Platform 9 dashboard, which is built with our own user interface. Behind the scenes, it's all, behind the scenes, it's all production grade OpenStack. So the first step when you get started as an end user um, is to download Platform 9's VMware vSphere gateway. So that's what we're going to do now. So this gateway is stamped with your specific security credentials. It's specific to your Platform 9 deployment, right? So it's not shared with any other Platform 9 customer. And think of this as your local liaison between your own VMware infrastructure and our cloud-hosted Platform 9 controller tier. So all you got to do is download this gateway appliance. Um, and I'm actually going to skip past this process, because this takes a few minutes to get that gateway downloaded about one gigabyte in size, then copy it over to vCenter, import it. So we're not going to go through all of that. Um, I have already done that. When you import the OVA into VMware, all you need to do is give it some properties. You, you give it vCenter credentials. You give it an IP address so that the appliance can come up, power on, and make a communication with the hosted Platform 9 controller. Right, and once it does that, uh, the moment it pairs with the hosted Platform 9 controller, if you come back to the Platform 9 portal, you see that the welcome wizard moves from step one to step two automatically, and it tells you, hey, it looks like you have some new gateway that is reporting for duty that's awaiting your authorization. Right, so that's the next step that you do. You're going to go ahead and authorize this VMware gateway to be part of your um, VMware environment. So as I do that, 
what's now presenting to me it's telling me hey it looks like you have these six vSphere clusters in your vSphere environment tell me what subset would you like to make part of your OpenStack cloud so you have the choice of selecting either all or some of your resources so I'm going to select three clusters here um, I'm then going to select few data stores you have to select one data store per cluster to make it part of your platform line cloud and as I did that now when I refresh this UI It'll take a little bit, and the network is a little bit slow here, so just bear with me. But what's going to happen now is uh, Platform 9 Gateway Appliance is going to engage in a discovery process. And that takes anywhere between a few minutes to a few tenths of minutes, depending on the scale of your environment. Right, so this setup is pretty small. Um, but what's happening behind the scenes is that the gateway is talking to your vCenter environment. It is authenticating. Then it's grabbing all the data it can find from your vCenter setup. It is both appliance to vCenter? Correct. Yes. Can you also have like one ESX host? One ESX host? So um, OpenStack VMware driver today requires vCenter, and it also requires DRS enabled clusters. So that's the requirement we have today. But we are looking into getting rid of that cluster requirement. We want to integrate directly with ESX hosts. So this appliance is going through its discovery mode. You see that it has discovered the three clusters, and it's gathering more data about these clusters. Um, as it's going through this process, it's going to be gathering data not just about your resources, but also about any VMware templates or any running virtual machines that it finds in that vCenter environment. And I think this is an important point to highlight because this is one of our biggest differentiators. Right? Unlike any other OpenStack offering that's out there where um, they specialize only in, in integrating with Greenfield, Platform 9 can take your existing Brownfield setup and literally transform it into an OpenStack cloud. Right? And we think it's really important to do because just think of those hundreds of thousands of vSphere deployments that are out there which have these existing assets in, in form of workloads and templates, and they really want to transform them into a cloud. So let's see if this discovery um, has made progress. So the model is that you deploy one appliance per vCenter. So if you have multiple vCenters, you just deploy one appliance instance per vCenter. So that's a really easy model to scale out. Um, and now you see that the discovery is finished. All the three servers are reporting for duty. Their status is connected. Um, let's go into networks. So when Platform 9 um, discovers your environment, it looks at all of your existing vSwitch or dvSwitch based networks, and it kind of seamlessly makes them part of your OpenStack cloud. Right, so this is uh, this step is done just out of the box without the end user having to do anything, um, and we think it's really important. We've you know we're familiar with issues around just setup with networking when people talk about setting up private clouds. So all the networks you had in the form of your VM network support groups are now part of your OpenStack cloud, and you now have the flexibility of assigning them to different tenants or really starting to make use of them. Right, so in summary, what we did was in a matter of minutes we layered. Platform 9 managed OpenStack in a very non-disruptive way without the administrator or end user having to do anything. And we now have production grade OpenStack ready for consumption. So this is all OpenStack with Nova, Glance, Keystone, Cinder, all the core OpenStack services. Can you also roll back uh, all this stuff if you if it if it was just uh, yeah, just a proof of concept and Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So all you gotta do is uh, undeploy that appliance. In fact, all you got to do is um, go to this gateway appliance and deauthorize it over here. And that's it. And so, you know, the appliance is pretty stateless. It's gathering all its data from vCenter anyway. So vCenter is always the source of truth. So it's just as easy to undeploy. Let's look at images. So these were all the templates that I had on my data stores that I paired with Platform 9. Right, so they automatically became part of my OpenStack cloud. So my Glance catalog, at this point, is already filled with images that I can start using as part of my cloud. If you don't have existing templates, then we give you some. We ship with a catalog of pre-built images. Um, these images are VMware ready. And what's more, they're also pre-enabled with CloudInit. Right, so CloudInit enables this um, advanced integration for doing things such as once a VM is deployed and gets an IP address, you can configure it, customize it, run some scripts. So these images come pre-built with that. So if you want, with one click, you can download that image, make it part of your catalog, and get started. 
Right, so it's all about it's all about DevOps friendliness. It's all about giving them a platform they, that they can immediately start consuming. Let's go ahead and look at instances. So we haven't deployed any new virtual machine here, right? So all these virtual machines were existing VMs that were on my vSphere clusters before I paired Platform 9 with that environment. And what you see here is all those VMs are now part of your Platform 9 OpenStack Cloud. So as an administrator, at this point, you can start layering on multi-tenancy using these existing workloads. So you can move some of them to a new tenant. You can assign it to a new user. So it's that easy to layer private cloud or OpenStack. And so you know, once you go through this setup process, it literally takes a few minutes or a few tens of minutes. At this point, as an admin, you're ready to start um, you know, layering multi-tenancy. So you can go ahead and create one or more host aggregates, one or more tiers of resources. You can then create one or more tenants. You can invite users in your environment to be part of those tenants. Uh, and then you can give them self-service access. Right, so the self-service really enables that ease of use where they can log into this exact same portal. Um, they have their own username and password. Um, they log into the portal and then they start checking out the virtual machine images and uh, creating new virtual machines, deploying them um, using this portal. Right, so this is all OpenStack with all its um, beauty and capability available to you. And everything that you see here is also backed by REST APIs or OpenStack CLIs, which are extremely intuitive. So that's the end-to-end -end experience, and that's how an end user can transform his existing vSphere infrastructure into an OpenStack-based cloud. And there is a number of things that you can do here. right? You can browse to an individual VM. You can log into the console of the VM, which is, again, a built-in capability. Um, I hope I'm on the network here. I've probably not enabled the console, console role for the server, but you can log into the console of VMs right from the portal itself, which, which was a feature, which was a high demand feature from our end users, um, which is really convenient to be able to do that. Um, so that is, in a nutshell, you know, how to give Amazon-like makeover for your existing VMware environments. Um, one last point that I want to mention as part of this is that once you set up this cloud, right, once you go through that initial deployment experience, which we think we make it extremely simple. Um, on an ongoing basis, you as a vSphere administrator have full capability to do any lower level operations directly going to your vCenter. Right? So this is something that uh, it's a special capability that we built on top of OpenStack as a separate service. Because we know that as an admin, there are so many lower level operations that you want to do directly at vCenter that OpenStack does, just doesn't give you access to. And so we want you to have that full flexibility and capability, and then Platform 9 will just adapt to any of those changes. So that's something, actually, our customers find extremely appealing. Um, we had some customers, when they heard of this feature, they said, oh, we might want to try an SRM DR-like scenario and see if all those VMs automatically become part of our DR OpenStack cloud. So there's many interesting scenarios in which you can apply this. So if I change for example, number of CPUs on the VM, mm -hmm. it will be visible here also. That's right. Yep. You could even move the VM to a different cluster, and then we'll reconcile with that. How much interval is there in syncing the data? Yeah, so that's a good question. So, um, so there's a local appliance that's deployed within your environment, right, which is primarily communicating to your vCenter server passing commands. Mm -hmm. And then it sends to the controller only metadata. And all the metadata is sent at its own frequency, so it really depends on what data is being sent. And because it's lightweight, right, there's no data that's being propagated, um, you rarely experience latency or other issues. So, so it's never a problem, but we also um, make sure to deploy your platform line controller um, local to your environment. So depending on where you're located in the world, your platform line controller would be geographically located. How do you manage all the process uh, of uh, OpenStack upgrades and uh, because they, uh, they change things that's every right. six months? That's exactly right. And that's actually one of the biggest value props that our customers find, which is not only we, do we make the OpenStack experience easy, but let's say the Kilo update is now out, right? That's the most recent OpenStack upgrade. Um, once we are ready to provide it to our customers, we completely automate the upgrade part. So we first upgrade the hosted controller, then it upgrades the appliance and all the components on it, um, all when the user uh, is not even involved in the process. 
So that's actually one of our biggest value propositions. And I, I don't know actually if there is a risk or not, but uh, if something changes in the APIs, can I maintain a, an older version for a longer time than... Right, so your, your OpenStack APIs will only change across major upgrades of OpenStack, and they tend to maintain, for the most part, compatibility with one version yeah, behind, etc. That's right, yeah, yeah. So there's always that risk, but what we do is when we're ready for an upgrade, we communicate with you about a month plus beforehand, and then we give you the choice. You can tell us, hey, we would like to test it in the sandbox environment first, validate that the APIs are working, then upgrade, or not upgrade this part of setup for some time. So we give a little bit of flexibility okay. around that.